August 24th, regular Board of Education meeting to order. I'd like to do this, begin with a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. First item on the agenda is items of interest, recognition, and inquiry. First, I'll open it up to board members. Yes, go on. I just want to thank everyone. I don't want to name names because I'll forget somebody. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But the community effort on um, Saturday for the painting of the fence at the field, I thought that was great. Thanks for donating your time and those businesses that donated supplies. Anyone else? Dr. Sculpin. Yes, I have several, uh, if you would indulge me, because a lot of good things have been happening in the last few days. Last week, uh, 63 East China School District educators, including 47 teachers, joined 41 other county educators, so we had 104 at all, in all, for five full days of cooperative learning training at St. Clair Middle School. Some of the feedback at the end of the week, if you would... Uh, Indulge me for a second. Um, I was 100% skeptical on Monday morning for using Kagan in high school setting. Now I'm 100% on board, planning to rearrange my classroom and purchase team tubs. This is absolutely the best professional development I've been to in my 20 years of teaching. It'll help rejuvenate my career. Exactly what I was looking for. I will use the structures to improve my courses, increase scores and interest. And the last one I'll share with you um, this is the best workshop ever. My husband is a teacher, and he has heard all about it. He needs to come. <laughs> so we were very proud to uh, host the training, and again, we thank those who participated. Um, it was 8.30 to 3.45, five days last week, um, a, a full week of training, and uh, very well, very, uh, well received. Um, we mentioned the, face uh, the fence painting. I, too, want to uh, thank the volunteers. Um, I will, though, um, thank Craig Zimmerman by name. He got the whole thing organized and approached um, folks like Detroit Ed Ederson and Lumberjack. So I want to give them a shout out for the donation of materials. Turf sale officially began uh, today. We're working at that. Yeah, it'll be uh, throughout the next uh, two weeks at uh, here at the central office and at Mariner Day, uh, Mariner Day Thursday, Saints Day uh, Friday, and next week. Um, I also want to thank everyone who was involved in the annual backpack uh, giveaway. Um, 332 backpacks were distributed. I want to thank Mrs. Frank and Mrs. Murphy for helping out, as well as um, the St. Clair Community Foundation for funding, uh, the acti uh, for funding and supporting uh, the backpack giveaway, the Marine City High School Student Government and Marine City High School Cheerleaders and the St. Clair High School National Honor Society all helped that day. We are very, very appreciative of that. Um, finally, um, I'd like to point out that um, the East China Education uh, Foundation, the ECEF, is partnering this year with the Blue Water Rivalry Run. So rather than the zombie run that occurred in uh, October this past year, the fall fundraiser for the uh, district's foundation will be the Rivalry Run. And this is uh, encompassing all the districts in the area. And if you go to our district website, you can uh, get a link directly to the uh, Rivalry Run homepage. And if you want to participate, I would suggest that maybe you register before uh, August 31st because the 5K run uh, goes up $5 after August 31st. And so um, please, um, we as partnering, the Educate East China Education Foundation receives $10 per registration. And that goes, of course, to support the many grants that uh, support our teachers and administrators in classes um, throughout the district. So if you're a runner or even if you're not a runner, there's a one mile uh, run walk for you as well. And we would appreciate your support. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Dr. Skulka. I the have a couple of things. I apologize if mm -hmm. I may, if, after you're done. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, I was reading through our policy books uh, the past couple weeks, and uh, I came across a few things that um, made me want to question them. Uh, first of all, um, property inventory, which is um, section 7,450. Uh, According to this, we the board sh it says the board shall maintain a continuous inventory of all district-owned equipment annually. Annually, and it goes on in more detail. But I would like to, if possible, I'll sit down and see that list um, between now and the next meeting. Um, and also, uh, in regard to Eddie Elementary, uh, I was wondering if we could. I don't know if this is something that we can do tonight or if it's something that is already planned. But to see the actual cost savings um, from that decision and to see a breakdown. Um, I've heard a lot of comment and discussion about selling the property in regard to um, the actual, like, the building to sell. And I, I believe it was Mr. Bewer that was quoted in the paper saying that. And so since he's not here tonight, I can't ask that question. But. Um, that's a concern that I have that if those discussions were taking place and the board was not informed, I, I think that that's an issue, number one. Uh, number two, an individual board member does not speak for all of us unless there's a vote on something. And so I think that that's something that needs to be made clear to whoever is potentially considering purchasing the property that they need to come to the board and not one individual board member. Um, also, uh, the Open Meetings Act uh, was brought up in the Times Herald. There's a lot of public concern. And so with that being said, I, I would like to make a motion to direct the superintendent to meet with outside legal counsel for the purpose of checking the legal validity of the vote to close Eddie Elementary at the August 10th special meeting and to provide le provide a legal written opinion to the board. Vice President uh, Kenick Bauer. Um, I'd like to just, sh I will share that um, the purchase agreement for ECEC, which the board uh, received and adopted, included in that purchase agreement, a right of first refusal for the Eddy property. And therefore, there was no individual um, arrangement. In fact, this board um, had that, that agreement and they voted on it. So if uh, Trustee Richley um, maybe um, isn't aware of that, um, and depending on how he voted, which I don't know at the moment, um, I was they, not they at that meeting. I was in Wisconsin, but yeah. <laughs> they did receive that, and the board acted on it as a board, not as individuals. Lastly, for a um, motion to be made at this point in time would require first a motion to amend the agenda. That was not done at the last meeting. At this point, to do that, it would require, it's not part of a conversation. Um, at the last meeting when that motion was made, it was part of the discussion that was occurring on that topic. As I, well, indica as I indicated, now. as I indicated at this point in the agenda, right, to make that motion, you would have to amend the agenda. But the motion was made, so. <laughs> if there's in no support, then <coughs> it dies, so. In any of, in either case, there's, Dr. Skulka is correct. We, we, it was an agenda item when we were discussing the, the assessment of our facilities. And that during that discussion is when the motion came up. Uh, this, this portion of the meeting is items of interest, recognition, and inquiry. Which so if you'd like to, if you'd like, If you'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda, that's fine. Would you like to, Mr. Richley? 
Yes, to include this as an action item uh, under the action items. But okay. I, I stand by the original thing, though. But uh, the second, or excuse me, the Wait third thing. You have a motion on the floor, don't you? Is there two? And with no second, that motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion dies. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third thing that I have is the policies on the district website. Um, they are requiring people to use a username and password. And yes, that I, I just tried it. Um, and I know the username and password, but that's something that needs to be checked on. So we will check on that. I don't know how you're getting there. But if you go to the Board of Education page, if you go to uh, that pay, uh, if you go to that link, the drop-down menu says Board Policies, and if you click on Board Policies, it takes you immediately to the Board Policies. So correct, it goes to the Neola website, which then prompts you to use a username and password. Okay, again, I'm not sure how you're getting there, but I will look into it. Anything else, Mr. Richie? Nope. Thank you. And the. Third item on the agenda is Academic Spotlight, Summer Learning Program 2015. Mrs. Woolman. Good evening, Dr. Skalka, members of the board. I am here tonight to report out to you on the East China School District Summer Learning Program, which just wrapped up a little over a week ago. Um, we have three distinct programs here in East China. We offer a high school program, a middle school program, and an elementary program. So I'll give you a brief overview of each as well as the financial status of each. Our high school program um, is held again this year at Marine City High School. We continue to hold it there because of the layout of the building and the accessibility to the summer feeding program for our students. It was held from July 6th to August 1st. The objective for the high school program is credit recovery or credit advancement. So we have students who are there making up credits so that they can stay up with their class. And we also have students who are taking classes in advance so that they can open up spots in their schedule maybe to stay in a fine arts class or to dual enroll. We had 52 high school students taking 83 classes. Um, we do have some students who are still working so I anticipate by the time school starts that number will be almost to 90. Some of the different classes that we offered were English, math, science, social studies, electives, Really, with the exception of PE, if there's a class you take at one of our high schools, we can offer it to you in summer school. We use the program Edgenuity. It's the same program we've used the last few years. It's a virtual classroom. So online, the students are working on vocabulary. They're listening to lectures, completing assignments, quest, te uh, quizzes, tests, and finally, a cumulative exam. The program does give us the ability to go in and modify the class. So the classes are aligned to state standards, but we go in um, even further and align them to our district uh, curriculum. So classes that our students do first semester, we select those for the first half of the class second semester. Our high school program had a staff of three individuals. Mr. Alley was our site coordinator again this year. He does an awesome job. Um, this year for the first time our students can work from home and so there were many a night where Mr. Alley was getting text messages from kids at 10 p.m. to unlock their tests and he was all over it. He did a great job. We had two teachers this year, um, Mr. Tim Maxwell and Mrs. Christy Sagan. We really try to make sure that we have a math and an English teacher there. That's what the bulk of our students are recovering credit in. So those are the two content areas where they need the most support. So both of those um, teachers, one Mr. Maxwell math and then Mrs. Sagan uh, was able to help students with ELA and social studies. Parents and students provided transportation for this program. So unlike our elementary program, we do not bus students in. In terms of the financials of the program, students paid $180 per class. 14 students received grants under free and reduced lunch. Those guidelines, their cost was reduced. WIA from all three high schools helped support students and then the St. Clair Goodwill Fund as well. So our anticipated cost for that program was $11,300. That's a little extra zero there. And our <laughs> revenue, <laughs> uh, slightly over $1,000 more. And it, again, it is anticipated. We do allow students in all three programs, we allow families to set up payment plans. So it might cost $180, but if they wanna pay $10 a week, we allow them to do that so that their child can get what they need we will work with them until the course is paid off. So you'll notice in all of these, our revenue is anticipated because we're still working with local families to collect that tuition. 
So the strengths of our program, 79 credits were awarded to 52 students. Seven of our students were able to fulfill graduation requirements so that they could graduate with their class this summer. And it's a hybrid program using technology and a blend of certified teachers there for support. So. The next is our middle school program. It was also held at Marine City High School. It started one day later. So our high school students came in on Monday, they got rolling. Middle school students came in on Tuesday. The objective of that program was to provide additional support and instruction, particularly in reading and math. Um, we had 16 middle school students. They had an hour and a half of readers workshop and then they had a mathematics class. We had two instructors, Mrs. Vicki Miller, did readers workshop with them every day and Mrs. Megan, Miss Megan Tomasek did math with them and she did math they were learning fractions with watermelon and balloons and baking cookies to learn fractions and mixing and so they were very creative with the students and every single student survey they told me fractions I understand fractions Tuition for the middle school program, very similar, $180 per student. They don't pay by class for this one. 14 out of our 16 students received a grant under Title I funding. Um, the financial data for that program, we anticipated it would cost a little over $3,600, and our revenue was about $2,800. Because we provide so many scholarships, we knew there would be a gap there. So the strengths of this program, small group instruction and direct support in reading and math. Some of the feedback, we do survey the students. Um, it'll be easier to do my homework now. I couldn't divide fractions and now I can. I left off the comments about watermelon. I have a higher reading level so I can read better now. Summer school helps strengthen what I know in math. So very positive feedback from the students. Our elementary program was also held on the Marine City campus. This one was held at Marine City Middle though. We have smaller tables and chairs there. But again, so they could have access to the summer feeding program. That program began um, as the high school and middle school programs ended. So July 27th to August 14th, focusing on reading and math instruction, we had 130 students in that program. As you can see, we had a very large staff for elementary. Um, one teacher per grade, with the exception of several of the grades, had two classrooms. Um, and we had three paraprofessionals this year because some of our classes were so large and we had some special needs students who required one-on-one -on -one support. The tuition for that program is $120 per student. And it does say in district because we do occasionally have students from surrounding districts who request to attend our summer school. So if we have open slots, we do allow them to do that. 130 students received scholarships through Title I or grant funds, so the students who came from our Title I buildings, Eddie, Gearing, or Bell, were eligible for those. We anticipated the uh, program would cost us a little over 14,000, and our revenue we anticipate at this point will be a little over 15,000. Transportation, we did run one shuttle bus from the north end of the district down to the south end of the district. The program, the strengths of that program were a focus on reader's workshop, those comprehension skills, uh, word attack skills, fluency, and then in math instruction, four, clear focus, place value, developing number sense, basic operations, and fractions, and again, very creative approaches, a lot like we saw at middle school. They were in the hallway, they were doing all kinds of different things, they were outside, it was the most excitement that building's seen in a couple months at this point. So they had a lot of fun, they showed up excited to be there, ready to learn. So it was a great program. So that's a quick overview of our program. Any questions? Mr. Richley? Um, are we still the only school district in the area that provides summer school? Um, I am not aware of who else does at this point. I believe some of the other districts are beginning to. Um, this was the first year where we have not had a uh, significant number of students from surrounding districts. Typically, we've had a handful from Marysville and Port Huron, even a few from Richmond. And this year, at the secondary level, we did not. Okay, and um, the other question that I had was about the Title I funding. Mm -hmm. um, is that, like, what are the requirements uh, for, um, or I guess what would be the qualifications for someone to receive the Title I funding? So for students to receive the scholarship through Title I, they need to attend an elementary school where Title funds are received. So if they attended Bell River, Eddy, or Gearing, the three buildings which received that federal funding, then they were eligible for a grant. Through the middle school program, any of the middle school students who had been from those elementary schools, we were also able to give them a scholarship. Okay, so excellent. So we track and back where they come to us from. Okay, and just a comment, I, I did want to say that I heard a lot of great things about the program this year, that it's, you know, good as always, so. <laughs> good, that's what we like to hear. Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs>
Next on our agenda is the cons consent agenda to approve approval of minutes, regular Board of Education meeting July 27th, 2015, special Board of Education meeting August 10th, 2015, approval of payment of bills, approval of schedule of investments, and approval of new teachers. I would like to pull items A and C off of the consent agenda, please. To do so requires a motion that would be seconded. No, it doesn't. No. Not according to our policy. If one board member can pull off any item from. I don't. Okay. I can pull it up if you okay. want. <laughs> and if pulled off, um, where will it be acted upon? Um, right after the consent agenda. A and C you want to treat separately? Uh, yes, please. Do you want me to pull it up or not? Huh? Okay. So then that would be to a, for the approval of payment of bills and the approval of new teachers. No. No, that would be the minutes and the schedule of investments. Yeah. The, yeah. I'm sorry, I thought you asked to pull A and C. Yes, A is the approval of minutes. Right, so we're, okay, so we pulled them. Okay. So now the consent agenda oh, okay. consists of. Oh, correct, correct. B and D. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> approval of payment of bills and approval of new teachers. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda as amended. Do we have a second? We need to. We need to. You have to have a second on this, I'm otherwise consent. we don't pay the bills. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Murphy. Second, Mrs. Murphy. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The consent agenda passes as amended. Now I'd like to make a, now the next portion of the separate consent agenda. Well, the reason why I pulled off the meeting minutes is because there's a correction. So That's can fine. I say what the correction is? Not until we have a motion on the floor okay. to the minutes. We'll treat them one at a time. First approval of minutes, regular Board of Education meeting July 27th, 2015, and special Board of Education meeting August 10th, 2015. A motion would be in order. So moved. Support. Moved by Secretary Frank, supported by Trustee Bebuck. Discussion. Okay. The corrections that I wanted to make was I voted no on the consent agenda at the July meeting which would be on page <coughs> that would be on page whoops um, that's the July 27th meeting so that would be on page 5 under or no excuse me where's that page 6 7 there you go <laughs> um, it says approved 7 to 0 I voted no on that and the August meeting, uh, Mr. Koenigbauer's motion was in between discussion. And Mr., I apologize if I butcher your name, it's like mine, but Mr. Schulster, I believe, um, came up and he gave a brief, he briefly answered questions. So I think that that should be, because that was in between discussion, it wasn't after discussion. The um, motion that was made to close Eddie Elementary and the addition of three words at the very end of that motion. Before, before we move on there, um, okay. which page are you on, Mr. This Richland? would be on page, you're talking about which one, the Eddie Elementary one? Yes, It would sir. be on page 9 and 10 of the minutes and... And where, it's not, okay, I see it on page 9 and 10, where do you suggest that it I'm suggesting that it be put 
up with in information and discussion items and underneath that should be that Mr. Scholster, um, I apologize if I'm butchering your last name, but um, answered, fielded a few questions from Mr. Buer, or one question I believe it was. But then uh, the other thing is at the very end of that motion. Hang on, hang on. We're, okay. st we're still, we've got to get this right. We're, okay. I'm still not clear. Can you, can you say paragraph or? Yes. The or just, do you have it marked up? If you could hand it over. Well, no, but I can. Okay. Please. This is what I'm talking about. Moving this up to here and then having below this, having Raul Schulster his presentation. So is it a move and an addition or a move? I think it's just a move. It would be just, uh, I guess, part. an addition. Because I, I believe if it's, yeah, because it's, uh, we'd never put in there anything about him <coughs> coming up to speak to the board. So you just want to add that after the motion? You're correct. And then so on it's the motion. So it's only an addition okay. then? I guess so, yeah, that would be an addition. But then uh, at the very end of that motion where it says, I'll read the last sentence, it says, work is to be reported to the board on regular intervals leading up to the approval and implementation. At the very end of that, there were three words that were also said and it was of the plan. And I would like that um, added in as well. If possible. Can you please? provide uh, mm -hmm. Vice President Kenneck Bauer with all of your changes. Yes. Vice President Kenneck Bauer, as an administrative staff, we work very hard to get out the board packet um, well in advance of these meetings. You have them to <coughs> review. I would appreciate in the future that if Trustee Richley has issues with the minutes or other parts of the agenda, he lets us know ahead of time so we can work it out um, and have them corrected and or have them for you um, done rather than taking up the time at these meetings. Thank you, and you do do a good job getting out in advance, and I would say that that would go for any board member to Absolutely. It, just give a call. Absolutely. And we can have this taken care of long before. Correct. So what are we doing? I did, and Kelly's got a copy of it. So if it's if it's if that's truly proper, we'll change it. Mm -hmm. So with those changes, can like you repeat those changes, Glenn? Because I'm <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm confused. I want to make sure I get it correct. I think, I think it boils down pretty um, pretty simply. Okay. For the regular board meeting of July 27th, Mr. Richley asked us to correct on page seven, number seven. Okay, I have that. that he voted against the consent agenda. Yeah, okay. So it's a 6 1. All right. And then on page, <coughs> on page 10, okay. he has to add to the minutes that. The representative from Barton Mallow commented on the facility study. So would that be after the word implementation? That would be after the word implementation or after the word plan, if that is mm -hmm. indeed the case. And, and we've got that written down. So okay. those are the only two changes. Oh, okay. So with um, that. And at the very end of the... Uh, So with that, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So that is. I'll make a motion to approve the schedule of investments as presented. There was no change or anything? No, I have a question about it. But we need a second. We need Correct. the motion. Right. right. Second. And the thing that I wanted to know is if we could get a um, presentation to the board on the sinking fund schedule. 
on um, how much money we anticipate to be in that account and what it's allocated to go towards. How many years do you want it out? I thought that was already done. No, not an updated. I, I don't have an updated one. We can, uh, we can certainly do that. Um, I request for my own personal clarification and understanding. Um, in a consent agenda, there is a, the motion to accept. There is a second. There is opportunity for discussion. If you weren't going to amend the schedule of adjustments, why didn't you just bring that up at that time? According to our board policies, the, the consent agenda isn't supposed to be discussed unless right. if you have something to discuss, you're supposed to pull it off. So. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So with that, all in favor of a, approving the schedule of, a, schedule of investments off the consent agenda, indicate by saying aye. 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 Against, same sign. Passes. Yes. yes. Oh, a Trustee, just a wrap. Next portion of the, on the next item on the agenda is per recognition of persons to wishing to address the board. Kelly, do we have any cards? We do not, so we will move on to reports. Dr. Skolka. Yes, um, each August we are required to provide uh, an update on uh, what is referred to as a bullying report provide you um, this information. Last August, um, I shared with you that we had some uh, issues that may brought our data into suspect because of the, trans uh, the transition between what was then um, our previous student management system and then the transition to Skyward. Um, we as an administrative team met quarterly over the past year to ensure that the data that we had consistent definitions across the buildings and that um, the transition uh, and the entry of data into Skyward was consistent across the buildings. That part, um, I believe, um, was successful. Um, when I present this data, though, I think something would be jumping out at folks, but I present it as is, and, and, and that is the bullying numbers, especially at the secondary schools. Um, Bullying has become a catch-all for any kind of behaviors in which someone might, um, uh, you know, look look at someone wrong or say something incorrect or something along those, along those lines. Um, as I put in your board packets, um, a fairly lengthy explanation. I won't go into all tonight, but um, that catch-all is not the legal definitions of those things. Um, bullying um, actually has to be legally. It is talks about repeated behaviors. It talks about likely to cause harm. There's some other things. Uh, there's the words such as substantial, and in essence, what we're finding. And I gave you the example of the young lady, and I'd like to share it tonight, was upset um, w uh, with another student who sent a threatening Instagram message. Um, the other student was an on and, off, on and off again friend. When that person who sent that message was brought in and talked to about the situation, first of all, if there had been previous um, back and forth, um, that is something that we can only act on the first that it's brought to our attention. Then it was brought to our attention. The principal met with that student. That student says, um, indicated in, in the notes that um, she acknowledged making a bad choice. She said she was frustrated. And um, that was the only discipline um, instance on her record for that year. So in other words, um, for it to be bullying, it has to be repeated. So when we addressed it with her, it was not repeated again. So though the person, um, uh, the family or the person may have felt as if they were bullying, not by the legal definition. In addition, there were notes um, that said that in addition to the student receiving school consequences, they also received uh, follow-ups by the counselor 
and by the, uh, the administrator of that building to ensure that nothing was further going on. So as we continue to um, work at these, I can understand where the general public would say, um, no bullying? Well, there's a great deal of effort put into addressing the situations as soon as we become aware of them. And as a result, very often it doesn't meet the legal definition. And so, um, but we will continue as an administrative team to meet quarterly to discuss this issue as well as the others. Aggressive behavior and harassment. Harassment is actually um, bullying instances. So in, in where you see six and five, those are instances, but when the bullying is, tar is um, when the behaviors, excuse me, um, specifically addresses a protected, a federally protected class. So maybe I was um, repeatedly giving someone a hard time about their race, their ethnicity, and something like that. And then it moves away from bullying into harassment by legal definition. So again, you see some of the, some of the trickiness of this as we report it to the state, and I have to report it here to you each August, that might not be consistent with what the general population would understand or call bullying. Okay. Any questions? Out of curiosity, right. um, at St. Clair and Marine City High School, were there a huge, was there a huge difference between the two or not? Um, no, in fact, um, it's fairly well divided. I mean, there's, okay. there's not, there's few, in, there's, there are yeah. five instances here between the two high schools and they are, they are similar in nature. It wasn't five to O or anything, or four okay. to one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second piece is more just informational um, and maybe kind of boring to the general public, but I want to make sure that you know as a board that the Michigan Department of Education has received its U.S. Department of Education request for a waiver. Um, and that flexibility waiver means that um, the state of Michigan will not have to... Uh, will not have to um, be subject to the mandates, the original mandates of No Child Left Behind. Um, this is a big deal. Without that waiver, and the waiver has been extended for three years, um, remember originally No Child Left Behind stated that every student, 100% of students, would be proficient in math and reading by the year, I believe it was 2014, which has come and gone, which ensured that every school in the state of Michigan would not reach that because not every single 100% of the students would make it and that we would all be on a adequate yearly progress um, no-no list, uh, all be considered failing schools. The flexibility waiver allows for 85% um, of students in Michigan schools proficient in mathematics and English language arts by 2022. That allows additional time and not an unattainable 100% level in order to reach those, uh, those uh, targets. Um, it also allowed for um, designations of focus and priority schools. And fortunately for the East China School District, we have no focus or priority schools, but uh, to be identified every three years, not every single year. And again, that's a, uh, an important designation because it allows for multi-years, multiple years of data. So in that, you do not find yourself on that list for a anomaly or in uh, a year that's just um, didn't hold up or it's not characteristic of your school. What they will be doing annually, though, starting again in 2016, is they will be recognizing reward schools. And again, um, we have been fortunate not to land on the priority or focus list, but five of our schools over the last um, three years have been designated as reward schools, and we continue to work toward um, achieving those similar results once we get back to um, recognizing those schools in 2016. One of the reasons for taking the year off is because, as you know, MSTEP was a brand new test last spring, and um, we still do not have the data from last spring in order to um, make any kind of instructional and or des um, school quality designation reports. They're talking now about providing schools with that data, hopefully sometime in the fall. So just a little bit of uh, information for you regarding um, what is pretty serious stuff, especially if you fall, fall on those focus and priority lists.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Skoka. Next topic on the agenda is for information and discussion, and it is the facility proposal. Yes. Yes. Um, the facility proposal um, has gone through several iterations. You received. You received your uh, original copy at your June meeting, and since then um, we have gone through three revisions. We're on the third revision of the original um, uh, proposal, and that is due primarily to your hard work and asking of questions, uh, pointed questions, important questions, that has resulted in um, that facility proposal being narrowed to what we now uh, have as a a, a final proposal for you folks that has brought the um, project in scope down to the the real essential elements of maintaining our buildings at a level in which um, we might want to refer to them as safe warm and dry they would be consistently maintained kids would have a safer environment and a well conditioned environment and especially um, with respect to um, heating, cooling, and all those infrastructure issues. The last iteration, uh, this last version, um, we provided to you as part of your board packet and at the same time put on the district website for public review uh, last week. And it will maintain, it will continue to be on the district website until such time as um, you choose to either act or not on moving forward couple of highlights that I might provide for you is that um, this um, this version reflects a more than 20 percent reduction in the overall cost from where we started to now at a, uh, a, a total of approximately 48 million dollars down from the 61 million dollar uh, figure it also reflects um, as you get past I understand that Maybe just the first page, uh, the totals or the summary was um, posted uh, on social media. And I would encourage anyone that they need to go and they need to uh, get into the depth of the report to see what those summary totals actually refer to. Because um, it was wise counsel on the part of the board to ask um, Rawl and his staff at Barton Mallow, who's here again tonight to answer any questions that you might have. To, um, to indicate and to designate any projects that would be uh, result in annual general fund savings. And we have done that with an asterisk. And those are in the details. You can see the variety of projects, such as um, upgrading uh, temperature control systems so that we may uh, do setbacks and other things that will save energy. In addition, um, there's notes regarding what would be required to do for um, for new code purposes as well as the fact of um, the uh, the technology not the infrastructure pieces but the replacement of what is now going on seven and eight year old um, computer equipment the fact that what we are talking about and what we are specking out is commercial grade, not consumer grade equipment. And that is a little higher cost equipment. But we have to remember that those are higher quality components because those machines are on um, seven to eight hours a day, every school day, 180 days a year. In addition, the smart boards require that the uh, equipment um, has dual monitor capabilities and a few other things that you just wouldn't have in a computer that you might go down to um, Best Buy and purchase for yourself. Um, another uh, thing to point out to folks is that um, the original, um, the original uh, facilities uh, report included some upgrades to Eddie. Those, of course, with the uh, action to um, close Eddie are now taken from the project, as uh, has been reflective in the second and third version. But also, this version does not do any addition at gearing, no classroom addition at gearing. But it does uh, place an addition here onto this facility. So if you were only to look at the summary, and you would see that the administration building 
is targeted for um, considerably more money than any of the elementaries, um, you might not understand that what we're talking about there is consolidating our preschool programs here at the central part of the district so that all preschool programs are available to all parts of the district uh, somewhat equidistant um, for everyone to get to. In addition, um, we know that the sale of the pending sale of ECEC means you have a preschool program there that would be without a home, that would bring them over here, that the um, uh, preschool uh, program at Gearing, the early childhood <coughs> program at Gearing, if moved here, would provide additional classroom space for the eventual closing of Eddie to accommodate those students. So bringing all of those programs, there are two programs here, there's a program at ECEC, there's a program at Gearing. Bringing them here not only provides greater accessibility to the entire district, it also causes, uh, creates savings in that um, in running in a single facility, you would have a, a single supervisor. You wouldn't have multiple sites that you're trying to manage and run. Uh, food service is consolidated for that group of students in a single site and so forth and so on. So that's um, some of the reasons for a, potent, a uh, suggested addition here um, to accommodate our youngest and uh, some of our most fun students. You know, Dr. Skulk, I have a question about that. Did we look at, uh, and maybe maybe you did, um, mm -hmm. it, through the redistricting, um, potentially having two preschool, you know, two of these programs versus one, one, you know, one at the north end, one at the south end, um, in order to maybe avoid any um, construction of additional space? Um. We didn't, we didn't look specifically at how they would, um, wh where they would go. Um, we would, in the closing of uh, Eddie, um, to put additional programming in Gearing and Pine, we're pretty much maxing out every classroom just to move those kids with some redistricting involved. Um, I'm not sure that we would have the additional space for additional preschool program. The other piece to this, too, is preschool is some of the most highly regulated uh, programming in the state um, in terms of licensing and uh, rules uh, for um, uh, square footage, um, the number of kids in a room, um, toilet facilities in every single room at a certain level and those kind of things and are in those rules. So it would take us, uh, we would have to license two sites rather than one. Certainly it's within the realm of discussion. Well, I was just thinking that, you know, it, one of the ideas that has been thrown out there is to move fifth grade to um, middle school and maybe that would um, open up some classes. It's just a thought maybe sure. to, you know, cut down the Mr. Slash, do you have any comment regarding uh, preschool uh, licensing? Any knowledge? No, I, I agree with your comments that there are uh, much stricter rules for preschool programs than for typical elementary. So, mm -hmm. uh, it it is uh, a, a more stringent requirements. And as Dr. Skalka said, you know, if you're licensing two separate facilities versus one, uh, you get the economy of scale versus on the and the facilities themselves as well as the you know, additional licensing and inspections and things like that. We can. Um, I, 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 as, as we talk about this and as, um, as we spread this number, which I understand 48 million is a large number, but when spread out over the total tax base of the district, we have discussed what that means in terms of 20-year um, bond and the difference in costs when you take uh, money off is probably less than a dollar a month. Can you remind us too how many how many classrooms of preschool um, we need we would have? It? Well, currently um, we have uh, five. At, we have. Four at um, at Gearing, with um, uh, what is a space for rec for for um, the gym type of thing, but they use a classroom for that space. 
Um, down at ECEC, we're running a similar number. And then here, um, we have that wing down there. The nice thing about bringing these uh, facilities all under one roof as well is that we have three separate kind of physical education for preschoolers uh, spaces being operated and the equipment for those in three different spaces. Here they would rotate through a single physical education space which would reduce the number of spaces. This particular proposal talks about adding um, an, eight adi an eight room addition or four on either side of a hallway plus the four we have work right here, three? Plus the three we have in this building currently. So um, 11, which would probably be 10 classrooms, and one for um, physical therapy uh, slash PE. This is a time for questions. Absolutely. OK. Um, first of all, so this is basically a final draft for the most part. Um, it would be my suggestion that the board, if you have additional questions, we certainly can work on them in the next couple of weeks, like Mrs. Franks, to provide. But in order to um, do all the steps necessary to get this on the ballot, um, if the board is going to pursue a ballot initiative, they need to take action at the September regular meeting. But we could still, I, I don't want to nitpick it to death, but mm -hmm. I still feel there's a lot of things that can be eliminated I mean if we have to do a special meeting in two weeks mm -hmm. or before you know whenever before our next meeting I you know because I just would like to know I, I still want to go into St. Clair High School I haven't been able to go in there yet and I kind of want to know when the last time these these parking lots have been paved okay. how, exactly how old some of our HVAC systems are because I, I just this, I seem to remember work being done at Marine City High School in the parking lot not all that long ago. HVAC systems, I think well, there's fairly I, new ones. There, there are. Um, is Mr. Griselka present? No, he's out, he's out. Oh, there he is. Oh, there Thank he is. you. <laughs> <laughs> <Ta -da. laughs> all right, as we, um, we, we talked um, at one point about like roofs, for example. We talk about replacement of roofs. Roofs are never replaced all in its entirety. So when you say that um, St. Clair High School had roof work done maybe two years ago, it was part of the roof. We didn't do the entire roof. There's on a, they're on schedules, rotating schedules for different well, sections. I'm, I'm okay different with sections the roofs. Of the building. I, I understand. I'm sorry. I was using that kind of as okay, an example sorry. because <laughs> similarly, um, uh, Mr. Grizelka, we did replace some HVAC units at Marine City uh, Middle School last year. We replaced three of how many? Um, maybe three of the 15 or so at that school. Last year? Mm -hmm. yeah, so three of 15. So again, it's, it's that rotationary idea. Um. I'm just because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. I was I was thinking a lot of these these kind of projects, the paving projects or whatever. I agree with Alan. I'd like to see a sinking fund because uh, I think a lot of this can be paid for out of that in years to come. Because I don't, I don't know of any of the parking lots that are that bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there, there's spots. There's I mean, spots, but it's not the whole. I mean, because in, in this, we're talking about repaving the whole parking lots and curbs and side roads and. I'd say, in general, the majority of the of the parking bus loops, uh, drop off parent loops, uh, would be addressed. Um, some are certainly in worse condition than others, but overall, there's work needed at all the buildings. Work but needed it, or total replacement? Well, <laughs> there's, there's a big difference. I, I mean, you can you can you know do temporary you know patches that will last for a short time, but to to address the projects. Yeah, we could do eventually out of a sinking fund? Um, what I will tell you, uh, I looked at the sinking fund uh, project schedule that was put together for 2016, 2017, I think 2018. 
I incorporated the work that was going to be the, at this point uh, uh, projected to be addressed by the sinking fund and took those out of this bond issue scope of work. So I've recognized what uh, has been put together as far as sinking fund expenditures uh, already, but the, the sinking fund expenditures are, are on the order of $600,000 each year. We Which have roughly, we, we receive roughly $650,000. And so I've made the comment the past couple meetings that for a proposal of this magnitude, um, $48 million at 650000 a year, we're down to originally at 60 some million. It would have taken us 90 years to do that work on the sinking fund. Well, I now, don't want it all done out of the sinking I, fund. I, I know. But, but I that, you right. know, I'm just, I, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out a way. I, I've incorporated what, what was projected is a sinking fund expense for the next three years, taking those out of this scope of work. So I recognize there are sinking funds. So what, funds is, what is on our sinking fund list for the next three years? Uh, there are a couple of roofing next projects. Year, next uh, year, the primary project, and it will take the entire right. sinking fund as But that's pine. all I know of it. I don't know right. anything right. after that. And beyond that, we have just regular roofing and, and other projects. Yeah, well, we've got the roofing in here. Yeah, yeah we could. Yep. Yes, we could. I just, you know, I just want I to be able to go through it again and okay. maybe have another I'd like small have group meeting. And yeah. Okay. Because Excuse. the last the last few meetings we've had, even in, in the small groups, I really want just what we have to have done thrown out there. If I may suggest, I know I'm being a pain, but uh, if we could have a special meeting and just do a workshop where we're all in the room and we're discussing it together and open, I think would be a that would be fine. better idea. But I will uh, I will contact Mr. Bewer, who's out of town, to see his availability and we'll organize something for you. Okay. Prior Thank to you. the September twenty. I don't know meeting. I don't know either. Twenty eighth yeah. September twenty eighth meeting. Yep. I'd be comfortable with that, and that way we can okay. all just. Hammer it out. Yep. Yeah, we really need to at the end by the end of that meeting we would need to have the plan. Right. right. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. Yep. Yes. So get ready, it's gonna be a long one. Yeah. The that's okay. <laughs> the other yeah. oh. I wanna say something else. Um, I have a note here. I'm not exactly sure who said it, but it, it really um, seemed to encompass everything that's going on. Um, my note is it's important to protect the community's community's investment while providing our students with the best possible education. So through all these discussions, we still need to bring it back to what's in the best interest for our kids and how are we going to provide them with the best education while keeping them safe. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think maybe some of these projects um, can be revisited because the other part of that is protect the community's investment. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe continuing to work on this is you know, what I'd like to see. It's a good idea. Yeah. I do know too though it kind of along the same lines is um, I know one of the things we've been worried about is if we don't act on some of these things and then it becomes an expense down the line and we don't have a budget to pay for these things um, you know versus get them taken care of in this in this situation so we're not taking money out of the classroom we're not taking money out of the right. general fund because to do these things when we when we rely on sinking fund money for everything there's only so much of it six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. so we do our repair on pine that our work on pine next year and some number of rooftop units go now we're with yeah, I mean heat. these these things put us in really good shape I mean great shape as far as the structure the internal you know so we don't have to worry about paying for those things and, and the things if there are problems we have warranties at that point, and and uh, again, we can put our money in the classroom. So I, I'm really happy with where we're going with this. Well, and I agree with Jeannie. I think um, we've lost sight of the fact that we're trying to do what's best for kids. And I know it's hard. Um, nobody wants their taxes raised. I've said that before. But what's in the best interest of kids? And um, we have worked really hard trying to get this down, whether we've met in small groups or individually and had meetings with Dr. Skalka or whatever. And, and we've, really, we've really worked hard. It may not look like it because we just all sit up here, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes that we've done to whittle it down. 
And I just want people to know that, that we're not just sitting up here, yeah, 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 because that's not what's happening. Yeah, I think Dr. Skalk is getting tired of seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Di, if we can get to somewhere where we can... <laughs> well, the other thing I want to... yay and start moving on it, that's yeah. awesome. The other thing I want to say is um, I was over at Marine City High School for the last couple weeks, and two of the times that I was there, there was some major leaks going on, and one was in a computer lab. I taught in a computer lab for many, many years, and I would go into my room sometimes, and there would be leaks going on the equipment. And that's one thing. We don't, we don't want leaks anywhere. And the thing of it is, we don't know how long that carpet was soaked. You know, we hadn't been there, what, a few days over the weekend. And so you try to vacuum it up the best you could, but what's underneath there? So we're, we're we also got what's best for kids in two graduations. Yes, we do have the kids in mind. We really do. Mm -hmm. Doctor Skoka. Yes, sir. Um, the thing I have a couple of concerns and questions uh, for the timing. Or the vote, what are we planning on doing? It's not going to be in March anymore, is it? We don't know if that's the case. We're still waiting for a Secretary of State slash Attorney General uh, opinion. Um, what Trustee Richley is referring to is that um, most recently the legislature has passed uh, a new law indicating that um, when, sc when school elections, uh, when school proposals can be put on the ballot, um, and they indicated, um, they eliminated the February, I, I believe they eliminated the February election, mm -hmm. but it, it stood silent on, the, uh, on any March, the law stays silent on any March presidential primary election. So you have secretary, uh, you have county clerks throughout the state, some of, which say, some of which say because the law is silent to a March presidential primary, you can do it. And others say, because it's, again, silent to it and doesn't say one way or another, you cannot. So um, given our, um, we can cert we w a, a, a vote at the September regular meeting would still allow us time to get it onto a March ballot if, we, if the um, Secretary of State slash um, just, uh, Department um, Attorney General says that's okay, but obviously um, there's, there is no issue with putting it on a May ballot, both in terms of timing and legality. And so my suggestion would be that we don't even pursue the March initiative. I, I don't think, I mean. That's certainly something that in your uh, special meeting that's coming up, you can discuss. I mean, it's, it's good that you've mm -hmm. thrown it out here tonight for people to consider but it can be discussed further. And then the eventual motion that um, comes forward, again, I say if, one, when, if and when one comes forward, would have to indicate what the election uh, date would be. It, one more concern, and that's, this is going to cost the district money, am I correct, putting it on the ballot, like with printing of the ballots and such, if there's nothing else on the ballot? If there's nothing else on the ballot. So why don't we wait until November? Because that, that's like ten thousand dollars, if I recall correctly, from well, the last. Well, I, I don't know what else might be on a May ballot, but um, again, it's something for the board to consider. I will look to try to do work to find out what is normally on a May ballot, um, and then we can go from there. For instance, if um, in two thousand, or I'm trying to, in two thousand nine in August they mm -hmm. held the election. Mm -hmm. And in the precincts where there weren't any elections, like in townships and such, mm -hmm. they don't have off-year primary. So mm -hmm. if we did it in 2016, November or August, there's a primary and general election. And I, I don't see the difference between doing it in May or August. What well, I'd ask uh, Ms. Schlesch to talk to that because um, that is um, critical months mm -hmm. uh, that we would not be able to get work done. Summer is the prime time to get work done when students aren't in buildings. So it would certainly behoove us to get moving um, earlier rather than later, as well as um, additional winters of uh, frost heaves and anything else that may occur. But um, there, there will be election costs regardless of when the election is held, whether it's November 
uh, or may if they're if the school district bond issue is the only thing on the ballot you know the cost is all uh, incorporated in the district that's part of the bond costs it's not money that comes out of the general fund it's part of the bond uh, proceeds so it's not uh, a separate cost that's that's coming out of general fund it would be out of the nine thousand or the it would be out of the bond amount so if the bond mm -hmm. is X number of dollars those bond funds uh, cover the cost of elections the uh, financial consultant the, the bond attorney the election notices the Treasury filing fee the uh, credit rating report all those kinds of things are costs to the district that come out of the bond proceeds but if the bond doesn't pass then is that what the nine thousand dollars is for in the proposal or is that what you're no, referring to no and if the no. bond if the bond does not pass then those those, those costs those come back to the district correct? those come back to the district you're so that, that would be through a separate thing so that's kind of yes like it's separate from the contract that with Barton Mello correct those those are for the advising and for running assisting in the running of the campaign and again, even those are not uh, paid out if the district decides upon, uh, if the bond were not to pass, but we were to either readjust the proposal and go again, those costs would be deferred. Correct. That brings me to my next concern. Um, I have a copy of the first page of the contract, and on the last bullet, it says, assist the team, this is of the first page of the contract, it says, assist the team in the Im implementation of a bond campaign, including assistance and in presenting to committee and citizen groups, communications, support, uh, proven leadership strategies, and graphical design assistance with campaign materials. I have a concern because in our board policy, it states that we don't participate in political uh, processes. And so does this- Go ahead. Uh, so, this contract I believe violates that because we basically paid a company to uh, do campaign services so that's I mean I'm not an expert but that's political <laughs> it um, it is not in that when you mount a campaign um, you would mount the necess you would look to um, any campaign that is mounted is funded privately and we would fund that privately just like we funded the bus campaign privately but this says assist the team in the implementation of a bond campaign including assistance in presenting to committee and citizen groups mm -hmm. communication support proven campaign strategies and graphical design assistance mm -hmm. with campaign materials so Correct. that that's a violation of and again only if we were to use general fund dollars which we would not be doing but so where is the nine thousand dollars or three or thirty four thousand dollars coming from the bond the bond proceeds is the thirty four thousand and the other monies would be coming through a campaign that is financed privately as we campaign as we privately finance the bus campaign but if we if we if it fails where is that nine thousand dollars coming from it doesn't just appear we would have to pay that. How, I, I'm going to have to say it for a third time. As we privately <laughs> raised the funds for the bus campaign, we would do the same here. So we're not going to be paying the $9,000 out of the general fund? In the event that we end up not um, being successful in moving forward, we would, we would have other funds available to do that. So it won't be coming from the general fund. No, what are you saying? We, I mean, am I, am no, I'm struggling. But it, it, I'm struggling, yes no. obviously. It's, I think Dr. Skulk has answered the question three times that that, that money is not allowed, and you have too, that money is not allowed to come out of the general fund. Period. Not a penny of it. For, because of this wording in this contract, that's that's not allowed. Correct. Okay. And the other thing that I have, mm -hmm. uh, redistricting, 
Uh, is that going to be something that we decide before or after the bond passes? Well, with a May, with a March and more likely May ballot, um, the idea that we would not have a plan for redistricting prior to that um, is um, makes no sense because obviously we have to plan for an upcoming school year. And okay, and the other question that I had about copiers, I don't know if anybody is here that was with the district when we bought the last grouping of copiers, but we've bought. I don't have the. I didn't bring my binder with me tonight, but it was like a hundred and something thousand worth of copiers five years ago, mm -hmm. and I guess some people say that they go bad after five years or something like that. Is that true? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it depends on you know the size, of the you know amount of use, and things like that. There's a whole variety of factors that goes into the life of any piece of equipment. So. And it, now that I think of it, it was actually like three years ago. But the thing that I'm concerned about is. I think we should again go through this more um, with regard to that and uh, lastly I, I guess Richley, can I just share that with respect to copies and, and I don't want to get too detailed we're talking about again this isn't your uh, copier that sits on your desk at home and I don't mean that oh, in, in a condescending it's way this is a copier that teachers are putting well over a million copies uh, a school year you know for however you know however many students that they have times how many classes times how many worksheets and or tests and or other materials that get done um, this is this is why I think there was an earlier question as to why don't uh, you know have you considered leasing rather than buying a copier and you don't lease a copier for many of the same reasons you don't lease a car if you know you're going to be driving a significant number of miles Leasing an automobile makes sense if you know that your annual mileage is well within the limits. But the per mile cost beyond the lease is excessive. And a per copy cost beyond a lease of a copier is, um, is, ex is equally um, very, very expensive. So these, these are things that um, I wish, and, and I don't mind explaining, and we need to explain so that people understand, but there also needs to be some measure of trust somewhere in that the people making these decisions have investigated, have experience, and have recommended um, to the board um, the most cost-effective uh, approach possible. Dr. Skolka, I think, I think what we're showing here is that there's a, there's a lot of concern to be good custodians of, mm -hmm. of every taxpayer dollar. And we said that we would, we would set up a, a special meeting before our regular September meeting pending uh, President Buer's mm -hmm. availability. Right. And perhaps, um, and I'm going to try to volunteer some more of Bart Mallow's time, so a lot of this work that these questions are coming up has already been done, I believe, in looking at, at least at a high level, when we look at copiers in general as a line item, we, there's, there's projected lives, so there's sure. life, there's numbers. Mm -hmm. the, work, the work, at least at a high level, has been done. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that, if, if anybody that has specific questions could get to you well in advance of the next meeting. That would be extremely helpful. I think um, these detailed type of questions, like how many, how many copies do we get out of copier A at Palms Elementary, mm -hmm. um, one might might be digging a little deeper than we need to, and and B, we could dig if we had time to right. prepare. Absolutely, and it's very similar to what we talked about earlier in that. We get out the board agenda well in advance so that you can review it and provide questions so that people aren't put on the spot at a board meeting or at a meeting such as this. I ask for the same courtesy with respect to this, and you folks have been really good about that in terms of sending me your questions so that I can work with Barton Mallow to have those responses for you. You know, get them to me. We will get those responses, especially as you're getting into what is now a very critical time for that special meeting. If 
we're going to basically not do that and come to meetings like this and then drop all these questions. We're just going to grind to uh, a halt to the point where we can't get work done. My we, purpose of bringing it up was that, number one, we just got them three years ago, but also the fact that they're $15,000 a piece, some of them, and some of yep. them are even more. And, and I understand mm -hmm. it's not like a small little copier that you're getting, but the problem is, mm -hmm. Well, I guess the question is, how many of these copiers are not currently working in the district? And that's, again, a question that will have to be answered. But I, I think that when people are going through rough times, which obviously economically it's not the best time in the entire world, but, you know, we're asking people to tighten their belts to cough up more money. And so why don't we tighten our belts and try to lengthen the life of these you know things and for with copiers I'm talking about but so so I, I only ask and in, in that per what we just talked about is that you had this you had this latest version last Wednesday you had the opportunity to provide me your questions on copiers and anything else that we may have been prepared tonight those questions are valid questions they are good questions Please make sure that prior to any special meeting, we have those questions in advance. That's okay. all I'm asking. Okay. And the other thing that um, I was wondering, when you said it was a dollar per month, for I, I'm just saying. I, I, and again, I was I was estimating that when we take when we take a, a proposal from 48 million to 46 million, and you spread that across the entire tax base of this district, as you saw in uh, last month, and I don't have the slides tonight, when we went from 60 million to 49 million, the, the cost was reduced, I believe, by maybe $2 or so per month. Um, so if we're gonna drop it by 2 million, it's just, I, I understand that's a big dollar number, 48 million, my goodness. But each individual taxpayer's contribution to that, including folks like the businesses like DTE who have a bigger contribution, is relatively small. And if we were to knock off a million bucks off of that and go from 48 to 47, all right, um, the impact on the taxpayer, the individual taxpayer, is gonna be, when spread out across the whole tax base, dollar or less. And, and, and you've done the heavy lifting. You folks have done awesome work and you've done the heavy lifting to get it from 61 to 48. And I'm not saying that we can't get a little lower because there might be something in there. But we could be at this forever until we nickel and dime this thing and we're not doing anything. And let's, let's not forget that while we're responsible for every dollar, but that one dollar that we save to push, and I'll use the copier example, mm -hmm to push the copier useful life, how many lessons, late lessons that a teacher can't print or materials, how many lessons is that dollar worth? I'm not, I'm not really sure, but I don't think it's very many. Can I say something about the copiers, please? And I don't want to beat this yeah. dead horse to death. And, but I think those copiers were bought a year or two before I retired. And it is very important that when a copier breaks down, it, it's a huge mess, and those are just like any other piece of technology. The life is very, very short, even though we pay a substantial amount for those. So they do need to be replaced every five to six years, and some of them may need to be replaced sooner because we're spending more and having the repair person come out and, and repairing it because copiers are becoming more sophisticated. Um, and so... As you know, any of you that have a computer, the more the computer does, the more expensive it, it is to repair it. And it's the same thing with these copiers. And when a copier goes down, it's pretty much everything stops. Um, because the office can't make copies, uh, teachers can't make copies. Yes, teachers could be better organized. Some of us are, some of us aren't, and things happen that you need a copier. And um, it's important that these copiers be updated. Thank you very much. I think we have to be careful too, um, and I, I'm agreeing with that. That uh, you know, we, you, if you chip away too much, you'll get to the point where you pass a bond and you have all these great improvements. And then, oh, how come we just passed the bond? How come this is broken? Mm -hmm. How come we didn't fix this? Mm -hmm. You know, because you you took 
took a couple too many things away maybe I, it's uh it might not be broken today but will it be broken tomorrow you know i think is part of what we're looking at here as well um a couple more things uh the, and Dr. Skelke, I appreciate your explanation of the dollar thing because mm -hmm. I, I understand what you meant. Now you meant a dollar going down. I thought you mm -hmm. meant it was just going to cost a dollar. No. So no. okay, I, I got that now. Um, but the the thing that I'm, uh, I guess, concerned with um, not 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 just the um, tax part of it, but also um, looking at uh, we're going with a bond, and I think if we consider going with an increased sinking fund instead of, for instance, just to give you an example, and am I correct in saying approximately our current sinking fund brings in about $650,000 a year? Correct. So just as an example, 2.12 is the average approximately, I'm just playing with numbers here, approximately the average per year uh, mill rate that people would be paying, or tax rate. That was the figure that I gave uh, last meeting and shared with you again when we met. Okay, so, or excuse me, according to that, so our current sinking fund is 0.4 mills, correct? Correct. So divide 2.12 by point, or excuse me, 0.4, you get 5.3. And so the point that I'm bringing up, the point that I'm, 5.3, multiply that by 650,000 that would bring in approximately 3.4 million dollars per year and if you do that for 20 years that would bring in 68.9 million um, that's are you are interest, you so. are you suggesting we amend the sinking fund to how much i don't know <laughs> but i'm saying that we, it would bring in more money than the proposed bond but over 20 time. years oh. correct well, yeah. We don't have 20 years. I mean, that's right. we're going to we be replacing the things that we're replacing in 20 years. But some of these things don't need to be replaced right away. Well, the big majority give me an example, Alan, of something that you don't think needs to be replaced. I'm just curious. Well, I think we need to look at the priority list, number one, but copiers for one. We have the priority list. I'm, no, that's not the priority list I'm talking about. I'm talking about the list of things that are going to be uh, replaced in a timeline. You're not understanding what I'm saying, but well, the Excel file that yeah. is put together for doing the, these things. The use of the sinking fund? No. The, okay. According to this list. All right. A um, couple of things regarding the sinking fund. Um, that is, you, you talked about a sinking fund of five point whatever mills. Um, by law, the sinking fund cannot exceed five mills. No, it would be two. It would okay. be two point, okay. or two point six two. It would be the okay. sinking fund. All right. Um, and as trustee, um, and as trustee um, Distelrath said, that means that you would be getting that money over twenty years, um, as opposed to making the necessary um, repairs and or infrastructure upgrades within the next year or two and you're hoping then obviously you're rolling the dice that um, a boiler that has already passed its usable life will stay another 10 to 15 to 20 years until it's in the rotation but the thing that this is the point that i'm making we would first of all not have all those bond costs first of all second of all because all we would be doing is amending the current sinking fund and is you that know legal? that you can't use a sinking well, fund. Is that legal just yes. to amend it? Yep. And you know that you cannot use a sinking fund for the purchase of technology. That's correct. Okay. So, so how would we update technology? I'm sorry, well, Dr. Skalka. No, no, that's perfectly think fine. Think about it this way. We're going to be apparently getting that new boiler system at Gearing. We're going to be getting all these things that have the stars by them that um, result in a significant annual general fund savings. And mm -hmm. so we would use that money to go towards that. And uh, I mean, it, it's not all going to be, you know, magically appearing at once, but so I if, think there's, if there's money left over, then we update technology. There okay. wouldn't be it wouldn't be money left over like a bond. It's continuous. It's a yearly income that we have that we can depend on rather than spending. We, For instance, a bond then? is similar to a mortgage. You right. get it all at once. Right. You spend it pretty much all at once. 
a sinking fund, which it has to be, uh, I believe has to be renewed in 2020, if I'm correct. Uh, yeah, 2020. And if, or no, 2022, excuse me. But anyway, <laughs> That's okay. that will, um, that will bring in more money, first of all. Oh, well, obviously over time, over time. But on the same point, it also will not cost as much. I mean, think about it. We're only going to be getting, uh, what is it, 49 million? With this over 20 years, you get 68.9, so. But you're, you are going to increase people's taxes from 0.4 mills to 2.2 mills. Is that what you're suggesting? I just want to make sure I understand what you're but saying. No, but listen. No, but I, <laughs> can you please answer my question? From 0.4 mills to 2.2 mills, is that correct? 2.63. Uh, so that's like a 500% increase. But what you're proposing is the same thing. Not but a 500% increase. Yes, it is. Okay. 2.12, 2. Well, I used the same figure that was given you know, on the can, last can presentation. We, could we do this well, at, at our... At our Yes. Not only at yes. the special meeting, but again, as I indicated at the last meeting, when I asked, I think respectfully, that you provide any plan so that we can uh, we can run those numbers and not start making them up and hypothesizing here on the spot, that you provide that plan and you provide that information, and together we can pull together the information for the right. board yes. so they can see that. Um, you are doing a disservice to folks by putting out this information without without truly having them had opportunity to um, look at it, be able to ask questions, and in a sense, throwing out numbers uh, that, that may or may not be accurate. I'm going to say that they are because I have no reason to, at this point, distrust them. But the other point, too, is that, yes, we are talking about the cash flow, the money flow. Do you want the money up front to do the work up front? Do you want the money over the next 20 years? And this idea that you're going to, um, by replacing uh, equipment over the next 20 years, get the same benefit to the general fund um, through um, greater efficiencies and reduced utility costs and those kind of things, over 20 years, not immediately, how, how do you fund? Uh, and then we're supposed to use that money in terms uh, to do to, to make more fixes when we're still not out of the red as a district in the whole. Your point, my, my is, simple your, point point is, point. your point is well taken, Dr. Skalka, that, that we need to get these, these types of questions in writing to you in advance and to, to do mental math on on budgets of a forty forty million dollar district, um, that's not the way. But that's not the way budgets and projects are are developed. Um, so I'd like I'd like you to I'd like you to please schedule the special meeting. Yes, thank you. And I'd like all of us as a board to give the courtesy to, to our staff and to make and so that we can make the most efficient use of their time because every every hour that a staff any staff member takes up fulfilling a request of ours let's remember that that's one hour that they're not focusing on our core mission and that would be the students I have one final thing and that's it's, it's to Mrs. I just wanted to say to Mrs. Bebuck, if you go on to our last, the last board presentation on, I believe it was the forty-nine million dollar figure. Okay. It was an average. The, the average per year mill rate is two point one two, and that's the rate that I used for the sinking fund. And so that's that's what I was referring to. Um, but lastly, I would like to make a motion to direct administration to seek a second or third opinion to the Barton Mallow study through the avenue of quotes on the proposed projects in the facility study that include no monetary commitments from the district. Is there a second? With no second, the motion dies. The next item on the agenda is before we get it's with the 
NEOLA policies that we reviewed. Dr. Skalka, can you give me give us a, a brief reminder, and I apologize, on the NEOLA policies that we discussed? Yeah, last month uh, we provided you the uh, all of the um, proposed changes in detail, and then there was a one-page summary sheet. And that summary sheet um, s uh, really reflected changes in law around um, some wording on teacher and administrator evaluation, which goes into effect for the 15-16 uh, school year, um, which again may be changed here shortly, we don't know, uh, <laughs> but at least goes in the current law for 15-16. It addressed um, some language regarding both certificated and non-certificated staff around um, um, harassment um, and, and those things. And um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think now off the top of my head. Those were the big ones. Those were the okay. two big ones. Thank you. And I, I apologize. I'm sorry. using the, it was in the last board packet yep. and I got caught without it. It was, yes. Mm -hmm. So the per recommendation Per administration recommendation, the Board of Education approved the NEOLA policies as presented and reviewed last um, month. I'll make a motion to approve the NEOLA policies as presented. I'll second. No, that's, we're good. Yeah. Uh, Trustee Distelrath seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please aye. indicate by aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Next action item on the on the agenda per administrative recommendation, the Board of Education approved the changes to Board Policy 3112 and 4112 as discussed and presented. And I will read that language. Staff communications, or excuse me, board staff communications. The Board of Education desires to maintain open channels of communication between itself and the staff, understanding the importance of the chain of command. The basic line of communication is suggested to be through, but not limited to the superintendent. A, staff communications to the board. Communications from staff members to the board or its committees should be submitted through the superintendent. This procedure is not intended to deny any staff member the right to appeal to the board on important matters through established procedures. Instead, as a sole employee of the board, the superintendent is responsible for investigating and responding to any issues or concerns brought to the board outside the allegations, outs, outside of allegations of misconduct by the superintendent. B, board communications to staff. Official communications, policies, and directives of the board of staff interest and concern to the staff should be communed, communicated through the superintendent who shall also keep staff members fully informed of the board's problems, concerns, and actions. So C, social interaction. Both staff and board members share a keen interest in the schools and in education gen in general and it is to the it is to be expected that when they meet at social affairs and other functions they will informally discuss such matters as educational trends issues and innovations and general activities of the district however since individual board members have no special authority except when they are convened as, at a legal meeting of the board or vested with special authority by board action discussion between staff and board members of personalities or personal grievances will be considered to be unethical conduct. Second. Second. Discussion? I just wanted to say that I appreciate the um, changes, it's <laughs> which we didn't read the changes, but it's good to see that we, um, we did that. But I still believe that this policy is not, um, I, I don't believe that it's in the best interest to have such a policy, but um, I believe that it's a step in the right direction and that's why I'm 
voting in favor of it because this is probably the most that we're ever going to get changed in it. So I appreciate that. Any other discussion? With that, we'll take a vote. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. For the next regular board meeting, we will have a presentation on spring athletics. And with no further business on our agenda, this meeting is adjourned.